Well, I want to tell you a few things about the NRA. It actually probably goes way back, and you might think it's irrelevant, but I think actually the way they started out and what foot they started out on is really what the organization's about overall. You know, I'm a lifetime member of the GOA. Uh, I belong to the NRA, but I'm like, I don't think I'm going to bother with them anymore. Um, Many things they have done in the past and right now I don't like. But, hey, let's do a little history here. It was actually, the NRA was actually formed in New York, New York State. It was the poor shooting skills of Northern Union soldiers, where mainly people were coming right off the boat like Germans and Irish, didn't speak English. Hey, here's a uniform, here's a rifle. In exchange for your citizenship, go down south and kill Native Americans, right? They've been living down there for generations. That's pretty much what the deal was. And they had bad marksmanship skills. So it was a couple of Yankees, the former Yankee Union officers, Colonel William Church and General George Wingate, um, that started the NRA in New York. In New York, so oh, this was per Colonel William Church. He says an association should be organized in this city, New York City, to promote and encourage rifle shooting on a scientific basis. The National Guard is too today too slow in getting out about this reform. So in other words, the NRA and its exception was very statist. So what the heck was the American Revolution about? It was actually, you know, for the people, not, you know, worship the state. But, you know, I'm from New New Jersey, New York, even though I have loads of South Carolinian heritage going back to the Confederacy and the American Revolution in South Carolina. Um, I just want to state that this embryo, this where the NRA started from was completely wrong. And somebody will say, oh, it changed now. Well, I don't think it changed that much, and I'll bring up some points. Private enterprise must take up the matter and push it into life. The subject has already been presented to several enterprising officers and ex-officers of the National Guard, all unionists, and they have found enthusiasm in the matter. So, in other words, they were promoting rifle skills for the National Guard, which is under the thumb of the governor. So it's like the absolute anti-focus of what you know the right to bear arms is about as enshrined in the Bill of Rights who were the anti-federalists. And the anti-federalists are right. Big time. They were correct. You think about it. If we didn't have a Bill of Rights, even though it's ignored, you know, the First Amendment, the second, you know, the First Amendment is the, with freedom of speech, which even on YouTube, you know, I mean, I'm hopefully I'm okay with this stuff, but then, you know maybe they might not like it. But I don't know. I think I'm okay. But freedom of speech, First Amendment, you know that's ignored, right? Then Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. Um, now, just want to get on some little more history. The NRA wasn't always staunchly opposed to gun constrictions. Now, I do kind of disagree with that. They're not that staunchly opposed to gun restrictions. The G- gun owners of America is, and those guys I support. Um, and I'm not somebody that really worships guns and all this kind of garbage. It's like, you know, it's invented. You know, better off having it in the hands of the people. I trust the people, the average person, than I trust more than I trust politicians and people that get too much power. That's really what it is, okay? NRA of past generations worked with the federal government to limit traffic in guns. The NRA worked with Congress and the White House for the National Firearms Act of 1934 and the Gun Control Act of 1938. Now, I just want to emphasize something here. You know, back in the movies, when you see all those guns uh, being shot in the movies with the gangsters like uh, Pretty Boy Floyd and, uh, I don't know, Machine Gun Kelly, right? Actually, in the 30s, crime was extremely low. You know, when you're looking back at the 30s, everybody looks at these Hollywood movies, you know, the gangsters. That was, and actually most of the gangsters were cheered on by the public because they were against the banking establishment. To tell you the truth, that's why a lot of them got away with so much stuff. They were actually like considered like by many people in the public as Robin Hoods, you know, sort of like modern day Robin Hoods. But the deal is the gangsters didn't prey on the public. And the bank, the gangsters were fed by things like uh, money from alcohol, which the public would want it. And you know how that was started with Prohibition, just to tell you again. Prohibition was started by mainly by John D. Rockefeller to limit the competition coming from the farmers who were selling alcohol to fuel the Model T Fords, 
which was the preferred fuel because it was much cleaner and the engines lasted much longer. He wanted everybody buying standard oil gasoline from his company, and he wanted the competition gone. So actually even Prohibition was a big money scam too. Um, I could go on with a lot of different things. You know, gasoline tax started in 1932 because um, the Depression was going on. The government didn't have enough money, so what did they do? They taxed gasoline. It's an oblique thing with, you know, I'm not, I'm really the subject of this is about the origins of the NRA, but I want to throw that fact in there because there's a lot of, there's so many interwoven things that happen. <laughs> it's, it's like, the point being, even when I bring up the fact that, you know, the gasoline tax was started in 1932, and 26 states brought upon sales taxes in their states because they're running out of money in their state coffers. So what do they do? Tax the public when the economy's bad because the government can't go under. And that brings you back obliquely to the issue of gun control. A, who wants to survive first? The government. Whether it's money or resources or anything. That's why it's dangerous having exclusive control of guns in the hands of the government. People got to have the main power. That's why, that's the whole emphasis. The NRA again worked with Congress in the White House on the Gun Control Act of 1968, which in fact is based upon the Nazi weapons law of March 1934, believe it or not. Um, the inst- instant uh, background check, right? The uh, system that resulted from the Brady gun law. That was supported by the NRA from its inception. So I'm going to get into some other things here. You know, like in New Jersey, you got Phil Murphy. And it, I'm going to tell you the truth. In Florida, you got Rick Scott. Even though he's a Republican, he's got this really great gun record. He is somebody you can't trust, even him. I'll get it back to that, too. None of these politicians you can trust. Um, but the origins of... The NRA was because the Yankees weren't good enough at killing the Native um, Americans that were, in other words, Native Americans. You know, people have been living down there for umpteen generations. The farmers, the American farmers down south, they weren't good enough at doing that. And the NRA, from its inception, was only to train people for the National um, Guard which was under the thumb of the governor. It wasn't about, you know, individual rights. And even today, I don't think it's about individual rights. They pushed for this Gun Control Act of 1968, which needs to be abolished. They need to abolish all the Gun Control Acts. We've actually, in the 1930s, in Central Park, New York City, you can walk down there at night and at and, and Saturday night, not worry about anything. That was when there was no gun laws. There but it's, you know, it wasn't like, you know, you can't carry this. You could do anything pretty much. Well, not New York City per se, but um, they still had pretty much no gun laws even in New York City. Phil Murphy, he's in New Jersey, the new elected governor. He's pretty damn bad. Um, he's going to get in for more gun control and stuff. But it's actually gun control is an elitist agenda. Um, it always has been, right? But the NRA is not the way to really fight it. It really is the GOA is better. And even the GOA doesn't go far enough. I personally like Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership the best, but they're big more, and they're not a political organization, they're an educational organization. Uh, but you notice, even in the textbooks in schools, you know, preparing for advanced placement exam, first 10 amendments, second amendment, they'll tell us people in schools that people have the right to keep bare arms in a state militia. That's not what it says. You know, it actually says, you know, the people have the right to keep bear, your people's right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That a state a militia, which is composed of all the people, is vital to the security of the state. You know, us, all the people. You know, so in other words, it's emphasized that the free, the people have the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That, so they're actually teaching students incorrectly, deliberately in books. You know, that's another game that's going on. So that's one of the reasons I like Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, and I've actually put a, a lot of different things on my channel about them. Gun control, date gateway to tyranny, how uh, the Nazi weapons law of March 18, 19, 
1938, excuse me, I said 1934, I think before, 1938 was implemented in our law in 1968 with the National Gun Control Act. Gun control is the key to genocide. When you never have a genocide without having um, state or polit- you know government gun control, where the citizens are disarmed. You'll never have a genocide when when people are armed. And actually, you have a lot less crime when people are armed. It's, it's, that's a proven fact. Um, now, one thing I'm going to tell you this. You know, I think one of the biggest uh, deflections where people don't fight back on is it's almost like I, you know. I don't know if I'm anti-Christian, but it's, I don't fall into that territory whereby Jesus is going to come back and save everything. I, you know, I, I, I lean very Jewish, to tell you the truth. I don't think he was the Messiah because um, <laughs> things wouldn't be so screwed up today. They would have been so screwed up for the next 2,000 years. You know, he's supposed to come back and fix everything. And, you know, that's one of the things where a lot of people just don't fight back on these important issues, because it is a very important issue. Genocides will, can, and may, often will occur at some point in time in the future when gun control is installed, especially when gun control is being pushed by, you know, elitists, very much so with vents that aren't really the way they happened, you know, and all this kind of garbage, which uh, the gun organization, even the GOA, doesn't go into. Now, I'm not... Uh, you know, I'm half Italian, and I, I always consider myself half Italian, half Confederate in one ways. But either side of me is pretty much, very much pro-independent and pro-independent thinking. Um, so, you know, that's one thing, right? But I liked going back into, you know, this is a classic case study. In New Jersey in 1966, before they passed the Gun Control Act of 1968, New Jersey passed this uh, Arthur Sill Law. Gun Control Act, Arthur Sill Gun Control Act in 1966, and a lot of it was, you know, the whole argument, you could see how they just shot themselves in the foot, literally, <laughs> practically, the gun the, the gun advocates, you know, the ones for individual rights to bear arms, because when they made their argument, they only did it from the sporting purposes thing, and that's like wrong, that's wrong-headed thinking, you know? The sport, you know, they should never have like any pro gun road organization be called Sportsmen's Association. Ever call that? You know, it should be called right to inherent right to <laughs> life and self defense organization or something like that. That's what it's about. You know, rabbinical law says all life is precious, and actually, that research that was originally done was done by Rabbi. Aaron Zellman, when I talked about Jews for the Preservation of Art, uh, gun, uh, uh, gun Ownership, um, that research for, you know, genocides are caused by gun control almost all the time, and, or, you know, gun control has to be in place first for a genocide to happen, and also the Nazi weapons law was implemented in the U.S. law. That research was actually done by Rabbi Aaron Zellman, who's no longer with us today, but today is still... The JPFO, George for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, is still run by rabbis, and Rabbi Ben Dory is running it today. Now, one of the arguments they were making back in 1966, before this is even be predecessor before, you know, this is before Robert Kennedy and uh, Martin Luther King were assassinated, right? This was, they were talking about JFK, John F. Kennedy. In fact, how many more presidents must we lose before we come to our senses? Now, today, we know, with the release of some of the JFK files by Trump, who didn't release all of them because, you know, I think the big boys are leaning on them, you know. They they said, you know, we know that Lee Harvey Oswald didn't kill JFK. He knew he was innocent. That's why he was so calm and everything, you know. Um, and... He was working with some people as some kind of agent or something against Russia, and he was playing like he was a commie so he'd get in with Fidel. And they had a plan. You know, I heard he was, there's a plan to assassinate Fidel with um, giving him uh, cancer causing agents, which would be delivered by Lee Harvey Oswald. That was one of the. I don't know if that's all true, but Lee Harvey Oswald was actually not the assassin of JFK. That's, that's pretty much, you know. 
now with the release of many of the JFK files, we know that's not, you know, he was there wasn't a lone gunman. But here is one of the reasons why they pushed through this Arthur Sill law in New Jersey, and later the Nas- National Gun Control Act in 1968. How many more presidents must we lose before we come to our senses? Actually, you know, I better not say, but you know, you know, there's a lot of angles why the president, he was going after the entrenched deep state, you want to call him, right? That's what was going on. So guess who whacked him, right? That's what it really was. Um, the governor in the fourth message to the legislature, and this is back in 1966 in New Jersey, is to preserve the right of sportsmen <laughs> and other law-abiding citizens, citizens, citizens to own firearms for legitimate purposes. This is Nazi thinking all the way. This is New Jersey. This is New Jersey. This is why I can't stand that place. And you know, most of the states in in the country, not only do you have like the Bill of Rights, the right to keep bear arms, but most of the states, especially the southern states, you'll see the state constitutions will have the people have the right to inherent right to self defense and the right to bear arms, right in the state constitutions. Yeah. Um. So again, you know, they're talking about the sportsmen. The sportsmen. See, they they already blew the whole argument. This sportsman um, concept is absolutely alien to the freaking Second Amendment. And, you know, it's alien to why the Second Amendment was put in the Bill of Rights. It's your inherent right to life. You don't own a... You know, suppose you never went hunting or target shooting your life. It's your inherent right to self-defense. You think there's some kind of magic wand that they have over people as soon as they put them in a uniform or something that they automatically become the most or especially politicians and when they get elected they're the most honest people in the world only the most you know why not why even have an election if you, you think that an honest person could be the best leader why not just have a dictator right I mean that's what a lot of people fall into right we don't need that <laughs> you're better off with like you know Controlled chaos in a lot of ways, you know. Controlled anarchy. You well, know, I don't want to call it anarchy, anarchy, but like, er, you know, anarchy like Southern California used to be in 1962, the good way, all right, that kind of way. Everybody does their own thing. Um, and I had complaints from people who live in New York, Newark, and who had summer homes in the shore, and they couldn't carry their pistols, and the sportsmen. Yeah, you know, they're talking about. All these people ignored the inherent right to self-defense and the danger of the state. The people that were actually the ones that were actively using their guns for target shooting and um, hunting and all this kind of stuff. The people are making the most that were actually involved in these shooting sports, which they were talking, were only arguing from the point of their sport. And this is really the problem with the whole mindset up in north that's why i can't stand a lot of them they only think about them and when they only think about them in other words these sportsmen got together quote unquote and this is the new jersey thinking like in other words you know i think about everybody you know i mean there's things out there i don't smoke any weed i don't care you know i don't smoke any marijuana at all never have you know what i think you should be able to do Whatever you want with that plant, you should be able to grow it all you want. It's not that harmful. It's like if you smoke a real lot of it. But you know what? If you take a lot of, eat a lot of Twinkies, that's real bad for you too, right? So, I mean, they don't restrict Twinkies at the supermarket. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you know, I don't really, I look at the broad concept. You know, it's not like, it's like I'll take up the bat for somebody else, even if, it's something to issue that it don't bother, it don't affect me. But you know, it, it's like in up north. This is why I got the hell out of there. They only seem to think about me, 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 me. Ugh. That drives me nuts about them a lot of times. And uh, got the hell out of there. But again, you know, talking about the shooting sports, involved in the sport. And this, I, you know, I was picking this out from all the me- minutes in the meeting back in 1966. And this is also the emphasis of how. The NRA thinks, you know, I mean, they only go so far and they're like way pro, like, you know, we're going after criminals. You know what? It ain't your job to go after criminals and, you know, 
the way I look at it, even with these gun control laws, and maybe this is pretty dangerous, but, you know, I don't really, you know, even a criminal ain't going to kill you if, if, as long as you don't piss them off most of the time. As long as they got enough money and whatever they got, if the economy's good, you'd be a lot less criminals. That's really what happens, to tell you the truth. Um, but I'm of the point of, you know, somebody, say somebody went to jail for so many years, whatever it was, or in prison for so many years. That's prison, right, when they go for more than a year. As soon as they get out, hey, I mean, they should be able to buy whatever the hell they want. They already paid whatever the hell their crime was, you know. So that's the way I think. And, you know, today they got it where if you get an argument with your wife and the police come, you you get restricted on your firearms, you're on the NICS system, and, I don't know, you got to, you know, hire attorneys. Uh, you know, this is all the stuff that the NRA is pr- promoting. The NRA is also promoting red flag laws, which is like nothing. In other words, if we think you might do something, possibly, you know, they're going to put you on this thing. The red flag laws, and all the states are jumping on it. You know, reality is, I think the politicians are going to do something. <laughs> That's really what it is. But, you know, not that, not them. They're like, they've been, this NRA has been very pro-statist, pro-Yankee, meaning not just northern, but Yankee in centralized government, fascism, <laughs> you know, New Jerseyism, whatever you want to call it, right? New Jerseyism. Eh. And, you know, honestly, I know the South is not perfect. Florida's getting all screwed up. Georgia's got problems. Tennessee's got problems. South Carolina's got problems. Even the, the seven golden states, as I call them, the first ones to secede. You know, I know they, they did not secede over slavery. Get out of here. You know, it's statism. Um, yeah, that was That's what the deal is. I mean, even there, the big heavy hand of, you know, the media is down on them and the politicians are all owned and, I can't say too much. I know why they're owned. They always got the goods on them. They always did something wrong in the background, and we'll bring this out and we'll ruin you if you don't do what we say, you know. Uh, lifelong shooter and sportsman. See, and then, um, let me see what the heck is this. Yeah, reasonable controls and restrictions. This is how New Jersey thinks, right? Harassment. Sportsman, sportsman, see, like, that's all they were arguing. Hey, sportsman, sportsman, sportsman. Fellow sportsman, they freaking blew the whole argument. Hunting and target practice. They didn't even, New Jersey had no concept of what the hell the Second Amendment is about, for crying out loud. I mean, it's, this was 1966. We only want to go hunting. Leave us alone, you know. And here, this guy, um, this was something else. The state... Arthur Sill investigated every member of the Citizens Committee of Firearms Legislation who were going against the, you know, the state will, <laughs> you know, the governor and its the attorney general will, investigated every single one of them. This is back in 1966. Now, I don't think they don't do this today, just so they can, you know, shut them up or do whatever they can to them. Any, they try to find anything on the guy, you know. Power of the government. Brr. And then, uh, again... You know, talk. You know, even then they're arguing only for like sportsman's angle. Now, there's one guy. There's one guy, Edward Kopech, way back in 1968. Probably not around anymore. Says he's not a polished political speaker or nothing like that, or public speaker. He says, "I want to remember. You know, I want to remind you about a little paper hanger way back by the name of Adolf Hitler. In 1937, the Nazi army uh, marched into Austria." And they took, literally, without firing a shot, all the guns. And again, in 1938, they marched into Stuttenland, which was part of the Czechoslovakia at the time. And they took almost every gun without firing a shot, simply because they knew just about every gun was. So this guy was not even, you know, a sportsman, right? He didn't, he didn't shoot or nothing. He's the only guy that made the right argument. It's amazing, you know? <laughs> so, again, you know... Back in the 17th century, they said, hear ye, hear ye. You know, back when the revolution was going on, all colonists were registered arms down with the town hall. You know, we had done that, no country would have been born. See that? See that? How come they aren't thinking like that, you know? And uh, what happened, you know, people are apathetic. You know, people in Europe are apathetic today. Well, (laughs) you know, they got some problems, right? So it's one too, you know, too many laws. 
you know, to, you know, the NRA is just freaking making more dumb laws. You know, that's all they do. I don't like them. I don't like them. But they're very Yankee in Oregon, origin. They were only put into, they started as a way to just kill Southerners who are trying to, you know, do the same thing that the American revolutionaries were doing. Get the hell away from the centralized power. The over-taxation burden. Um, and that's really what they're about. Now, even if you take a guy like Rick Scott down here in Florida, who's supposedly pro-Second Amendment, he's not really. And uh, I think that's just a game he plays, so he, he's got some playing cards against the opposition. This guy's crook. I want to mention this. In 1997, you know, he was in the HCA, which is Hospital Corporation of America. He was the CEO. They got fined over a billion dollars, right? And I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not even voting anymore because I don't even know how Republican, Democrat, don't even matter. I always do always vote Republican. I don't even bother no more. It, that's how bad it is. It's like I just hope I don't know what happens. But 1997, Rick Scott was paid almost 10 million dollars in a settlement from HCA for retiring, and he left with 350 million dollars with the stocks. Right? Then, you know, I can tell you a lot of other deals. This guy's a crook like the Bush family and freaking Clintons and stuff. They're all freaking crooks, Democrats and Republicans. And between 98 and 2001, Scott purchased 50% of CyberGuard Corporation for $10 million. Then he sold it for $300 uh, million. At $290 million um, profit, right? And he was in partnership with another some, somebody else. So that's another $145 million. So the guy already got, you know, he already got $360 plus $440. 45. So he's got five. He's got half a billion dollars right there. Not even talking about his other deals, right? Supposedly his net worth was 219 million in 2010. But a year after the election, because you know when he got elected in 2011, he's only worth 84 million. <laughs> you know one of the beefs they said about him? Well, he didn't disclose everything. He had stuff in blind trust, and he released it later. It's very complicated. I don't want to get into all the deals, but I'm telling you. All these guys are out for number one. And when they tell these politicians, when they write down something on a piece of paper, they're pro-gun, you don't know what they're about, including somebody like Rick Scott, who's got a good record. I mean, yeah, I mean, he looks a thousand times better than Phil Murphy, but don't trust any of them. Don't trust any of them. I don't know what the solution is here, but it's like, I don't know. I mean, it's, I mean, to me, it's laissez-faire. Now, here's another thing. Remember you, we talked about Trump, and Trump does not accept the salary? Scott doesn't. Rick Scott in Florida doesn't accept the salary, governor's salary. Well, why does he need to? He's all, I think he's all, he's all hooked into the medical stuff down here at HCA. He don't make your money off the stupid salary from uh, the, the pol- politician's salary. You don't make the money off of that. You make them off of all the other stuff. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, you know, I just want to emphasize this, that, you know, before people go jumping on this NRA bandwagon, you know, GOA is a lot better. I wish they'd go further and expose the, you know, contrived events that are going on, you know. <laughs> I got a lot of angles I could put on that, but I can't, you know, on YouTube, you know, the First Amendment don't apply to that kind of stuff, you know. I don't even know if it hopefully applies to this, but. The NRA is not the right one. No. I'm kind of fed up with them big time. GOA, at least, is actually... Well, they broke off from the NRA originally because of this problem with the NRA. They're not really pro-individual rights, you know? They're pro... You know, you know what I mean. But, you know, the NRA, right from its inception, has always been statist. You know, and that's really... They, they kind of have that in them still. And Wayne LaPierre, just he's just a multi-millionaire. They kind of turn me off in a lot of, even the way they present stuff. They really do. I like, I personally, like I said, I like, well, I like the ones that present the stuff the best is the G- Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, right now run by Rabbi Ben Dory. But that's the concept you got to keep in mind. Because it goes beyond this Second Amendment stuff. Genocides can and often will occur when governments have gun control. That's, you know, when governments are playing games 
behind the scenes to make events happen and or make them look a certain way and leaving out stuff, and you know there's real evil afoot. Right? So, and they control the media. The government controls Google. <laughs> Call Google, Google government. And, and uh, like I said, I don't trust these so-called conservatives. These are Rick Scott supposed to be conservative. Yeah, right. Get out of here, you bum. Yeah, bullshit. Hey, excuse me. <laughs> but that's really what it is. And, um, you know, it's just a stupid label. But I did a lot of research on this, and I really can't go off too long on this, but pretty much everything, everything's a scam, you know? Even, I lean more Jewish, okay, in nature. This Jesus stuff, I think Jesus was a great Jewish prophet. I don't think he intended to be start a religion. Um, he was many, he was one of hundreds of Jews that were crucified by the state of Rome because they didn't want trouble. And, you know, I think he was a very good guy and a great prophet. I don't disrespect him or nothing. I kind of, you know, but you can't take this Jesus teddy bear and run with it and say everything's fine because he's going to come again, everything's going to be fine, nothing you can do about it. No, no. I'm more like a fighter, like one of the ones up there on top of the hill in Masada, you know? And I'm not switching from, I'm Roman Catholic still, but, you know, I know the Pope's a crook. I know that he's, he can give all the money in the world to the poor, and he's, he's, he just wants more money for him. But, you know, in <laughs> reality, well, I know why I'm not becoming Jewish, because that'd be just, you know, it's like if I'm not Jewish, <laughs> it's like I could say more, you know. <laughs> so I'm staying Roman Catholic. Anyway, but, you know, I know where my heart is. And actually, the reality of the situation is if you get into real... Well, the Christians call it the Old Testament, the Bible, whatever. Let's look at it, what it says. I mean, look at what happened even back then, you know? You have an inherent right to self-defense. You have an inherent right to life. This is why you're allowed to have weapons. You know, why the hell is it, you know, do you think the politicians are so honest and the government's so honest? Yeah, get out of here. If you're freaking, if you're that stupid, I mean, you must have an intelligence level of below 80 on your IQ, Right. So anyway, over and out, just wanted to point out the other angle, and I brought up a lot of other hodgepodge of different things, but the other angle is that the NRA is actually Yankee and statist in origin. That's not too cool. And they've always had that flavor since all the way through. They pushed this Gun Control Act in 1968, they push for the Nick system. They, they're now pushing for the red flag laws. They push for the Gun Control Act. They act the National Firearms Act of 34, the Gun Control Acts of 30, 38. I mean, what else? I mean, they're, they're not. To me, it's like you sort of throw all these damn laws out the freaking window. We actually had very, very, very little crime in this country when there was almost there was virtually no gun control. You gotta have, you know, really what it comes down to is you gotta have respect for each other. That's really what the hell it is. If you have respect for each other, you can have pretty much whatever. The authorities can't make people moral. You know? It's just how it is. I'm very much for, like, an attitude where, well, even in California, 1960s and early 60s, boy, it was pretty much, 